I must first say um, good evening or good afternoon, brethren. Good afternoon. It's a blessed day and a blessed privilege to be worshiping God. Yes. As you can see, my topic is what? The forgotten doctrine of yes. strange title. Yes. But aren't you um remember when we first come into the church, we used to hear a lot of doctrine, mm. especially on this second coming of Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm. Don't you think they've forgotten that one? Yeah, Let us bow our head. A matter of fact, we will kneel. Our Father and our God, we thank you for life. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the health and for the strength. We thank you most of all that you promised to forgive our sins and that you will take us into heaven with you when you come again, dear Father. We ask, O oh God, that you may clear the way in our heart, dear Father. Allow us to empty our vessel so that you can fill us up. May thy Holy Spirit take full charge and control of every heart we pray. For Christ's sake. Amen. The forgotten doctrine of confidence. The story was told that a man rushed down into the suburban train station and asked the ticket agent what time it is. In reply, the ticket agent asked, um, said 801. The young man came to catch the 801 train that was leaving the station. He said, Well, there is 759 on my watch, 759 on the town clock, and 804 on the station clock. Hmm. What time am I going by? The ticket agent reply, you can go by whatever time you wish, but you can never, never catch the 804 train. The 801 train, for he had a rail gone into it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the train is fastly moving. Time is fastly creeping up on us. As you can see, we are heading for home. Yes. It is said that just before Jesus come, he will give some signs. As you can see the reading, cast not away therefore your confidence, let us read it together by the way, which have what? For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But ye are not of them that draw back unto perdition. I think that that scripture reading is wonderful. Amen. And we have confidence today. Amen. They have made us afraid of everything, even ourselves. Mm. But the reading is saying that cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. You know what is recompense? Recompense is when you walk, you get your pay. Amen. The reward is eternal life. Amen. Amen. Great recompense of reward. In the book of Okay. We will go to Hebrews 10. 10 what? 10.5. Ten we'll read it together. So now let, let's take it together. Let's go. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared 
Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> right? Oh, oh, man, I messed up already. Second time, second time. Okay. Yes. Alright, we'll take that over. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but the body has thou prepared me. If you notice, when God created man in the Garden of Eden, he had made a promise after man had sinned. He had made a promise that he would put enmity between God and man, which means he will bruise the serpent's head and he will bruise his knee. About 500, about 2,500 years ago, Christ made his entrance into this world. While he made his entrance into this world, he said, A body will do prepare for me. We read it. That he will come down and die for man because man sinned. Mm -hmm. There is no body in heaven or on earth or under the earth that could take away sins. So Christ himself made his way into this world. That's why he said when he come, he will cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Right. While, while Christ came into this world and died for man because man sinned, where no body could not forgive sin, Christ did it. Now, after Christ come into this world and he died for man's sin, Hebrews talk about what? Let us what? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as we see the day approaching. Let us draw near with a true heart. I'll tell you what. While the world is saying, draw a path, Christ is saying, let us draw near. Yes, yes, yes. So when we draw near, we pick up warm with each other. Yes, yes. When we pick up warm with each other, we grow closer in faith and confidence with each other, which Christ love. Amen. Let us draw near. The world is saying, six feet apart, Christ say, come. Which we will obey. Ah. Yes. <laughs> a matter of fact, as I said earlier on, they make us afraid of our own self. Even your own brethren afraid to pass by you. Mercy. We are heading down fool's road, down into the precipice. Mercy. Mercy. If Christ give something, do you think he could take care of it? Yes. Yes. If Christ say, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cared Amen. for you. Amen. Amen. I tell you something. Listen. Some of us are so frightened and so afraid that we're killing ourselves mm. and thinking we're saving ourselves. Mm. Mercy. They have implement or they conjure up or whatever they do. And the states are big vaccine and people are running headlong taking it, don't even know what they're taking or what in it. But they are taking it. But Christ said, let us draw near and provoke unto love. And not only, not only love, good works. You know you have, you know you have um, fake works, right? That's why he say good works. You have a lot of work that is fake. Oh yes. Christ in uh, John, let me, let me just read, um, scroll on this thing, man. 
Let us read together. In the beginning, what? The word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's what John said. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So Christ himself was the word which he promised, and he made his way down to our earth, the entrance down to our earth, die for man's sin. That's the word. Now, according to 2 Peter 3, let's go again. Let's go. The Lord is what? As some man comes, but he's long suffering towards us. Not that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. According to Peter, Peter got the blames. He said that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men come slackness, but his long suffering towards us, all not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Some say, Well, listen. If he's coming, why don't come? That is the question. That is the answer. The Lord is not slack, slack concerning his promise, as some men come slackness. If it's coming, why does it come? He's not slack. But show, uh, for sure, he will come. Yes. He will come. Yes. How I know he will come? Let us read it. For we promised the word. The word was made flesh and dwelled among us. They had the word, yes, but after Christ have left, died on the cross and left, gone back to heaven, Peter wrote that we have also a more sure word. Yes, yes. Why he is more sure? Because we ate with him. Yes. We sleep with him. Yes. We drink with him. Yes. We even see him when he transfer on the holy mount. Yes. Remember Christ said that there are some of you standing here which will not see that. Yes. When Christ transfer his glory on the holy mount of transfiguration, that was his second coming. They saw Christ's second coming. Yes. Christ transferred all his splendor and glory. glory. That's why Peter was dumb from there and said, Lord, it is good to be here, but let us make three tabernacles. One for Elijah, one for Moses, and one for you. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. We are coming down to the dregs of time. Yes. When Christ promised, what will happen is happening. That's hmm. right. We are also a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. Oh, I know that. Hmm. Oh, I know that. Let us go. This know what? For many shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. So 
You see how we know it? This know also that in the last days, perilous time is here. Yes, yes. Not shall come. <laughs> perilous time is here. For what? Men shall be lovers of their own self. I have never seen so much of selfishness in these days. Since I was alive, or since I'm alive, I shouldn't say was, I'm still alive. Since I'm alive, I have never seen so much of selfishness. Why is that boasters? People are proud of everything. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. What? Let me just cut that short. Four-year-old child telling the mommy what they want and what they should do and should not do. I don't blame the child. I blame the parents. Yes. If the scripture says train up the child in the way that he should go, that when he's old he would not depart from it, how comes a four-year-old child telling a parent what to do? Who's the parents and who's the child? Let me just throw in a little humor here. Um, I don't like to do humor, but I heard a story of we all come from the Caribbean and we know about dogs. Mm -hmm. But up here, the dogs are the master. And the master are the servant. Because they do everything for the dog. While the dog rule and scratch his body. I'm saying that to say this. Who are the master and who are the children? Who are the children and who are the parents? We have also a more sure word of prophecy that we should take heed as a light that shineth into a dark world. We have truth breakers, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, traitors, even in our midst. They don't want to come out and tell you, yes, straight arm. This is it. But they hide in between the veil. And those who don't study for themselves get caught between the ticket. Yes. Traitors, false accusers, fierce, despisers of those that are good. <laughs> we are heading home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. We are heading home. How long? Not long. How long? Not long. When we have ministers standing in the pulpit and making, making sins, right sins on paper and burning it in the pulpit, we know troublous times. We know when we have so much a, so much a baggage into the truth. We know we are in perilous times. We have Men's Day, Women's Day, mm. Children's Day, Pastor Appreciation Day, every day but God Day. Mm. We know we are heading in destruction. We are in the time of trouble. Stand for yourself. Paul pick up the story. Now, let me just go to the um, screen. What is it? Looking for the what? That's all we're looking for now. Amen. The blessed hope. Yes. We all are hope in Christ. And it's a blessed hope. Amen. Why is it blessed? Christ is blessed. Amen. We have no blessing of, of our own. And because Christ is blessed and we believe in him, we have a blessed hope. Amen. 
looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance. Not too long, brothers and sisters. Yes. In a little while, amen. we are going home. Yes, amen. We are on the road, yes. moving. All we got to do is do what we have to do. Yes. Going, uh, going therefore in what? All, All the world. Some of us may not travel, but the little world where we are. Yes, yes, yes. Preach the gospel to every creature, all nation. Then shall the end come. You know why we have to preach it? So that none will have excuse. Yes, yes. When the day of judgment, you can't come and say you didn't know. All should get a chance. Blessed who? And what? And Jesus and Son said unto them, what? I said before already, we have a set of traitors. While Christ was on the Mount of Olives, when his disciples come unto him and asking him, tell us the sign, what shall be? The first word that comes out of Jesus' mouth, take heed. Don't let no man deceive you. I told you what would happen. Hmm. Everything that is held a skelter running, scattering all about. Take heed. Don't be deceived. Amen. And there is a reason why he say, don't be deceived. And as what? As the days of Noah, so shall the days of the they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of God, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. I hope you get a picture. Do you think we did in the days of Noah now? Yes. <laughs> we we surpass Noah days now, you know. And we're going to surpass Saddam and Gomorrah days. Mm. As it was in the days of Noe, so shall it be also in the coming of the Son of Man. They did it, they drink, they planted, they build it, everything is going on. But what? The same day Noah entered into the ark, the flood came. We have a little window. Yes. As God's people, let us make use of it. Amen. Just a little window. Likewise, as, it, as also it was in the days of Lot. Did you know Lot almost lost his life? Yes. If it were not the prayer of his grand or his uncle. He would have lost his life. Mm. Could you imagine God telling you, get out, but you, you're turning around. Yes, Listen, that's why we have to hasten, you know. Yes, yes, yes. yes. No angel will come and drag us out of the city. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the angel drag us, drag us lot. Mm -hmm. He's not going to do that for us. We have the word. That's why we have a most sure word of prophecy. Amen. That we take heed. Hebrews, let us turn to our Bible now. We're going to Bible. Hebrews 10, 10 22. We'll read it together. It's found? Amen. All right, let us read together. Let us what? Let us what? 
stay far apart. We, we, we should draw near with Christ. That's what we have to do. Second Timothy say in the last days, perilous time, we see that. We don't have much time here again. Oh no. Christ is coming. And he's coming back very soon, quicker than we believe. How long, I say? Not long. When Jesus shall come, According to the, he gave some signs, you know. By the way, he gave some signs before he come. According to Luke, let's go to Luke 17 and verse 26. I guess it's from now, right? All right. And what? And it's all what? And as it was in the days of Lord, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. As we read it before already, we don't know 
But Christ gave some sign, and it's not too long from now when he shall bust the cloud of glory and put forth his appearance. Not too long from now, according to Matthew, Matthew 11 28, say, Come unto me. Matthew 20, 11, 28. Let's read it together. We have in the wilderness of sin trying to move forward. 11, verse 28 and 30. When it's found, let's read it together. Come on, what? Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's the only way we could find rest. Someone peace and rest. Those who in authority telling us that it will never go back to normal. But yet, God's people looking for it to come back to normal. You know something what, what kind of baffling me? They say it is a new normal. If it is new, it's not normal. And if it's normal, it's not new. How you gonna have a new normal? Or maybe something wrong with me? I can understand that. Come unto me, all he that labor and are heavy laden. Laden with what? With sin. Christ promised rest. For those weary souls, come. But and done with sin and guilt, come. He said, turn it over to me, I'll take it. I'll cleanse you. I'll wash you, I'll make you white as snow. Come. Labor and have heavy lid. Listen, you, you know the last part say, take my yoke upon you. I learned that a yoke was made for two. I could remember very well while I was in Trinidad, I see um, two bison and they have yoke, one here and one there. And the cart is in the back and they pull in the load. Christ says, come yoke yourself with me. I'll pull the load for you. Amen. We don't have all this big set of pulling to do. The only big set of pulling we have to do is when we do not yoke ourselves with Christ. Yes. 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 Yoke with Christ. Come unto me. You heavy and you have heavy laden. I will give you rest. Don't afraid. Rest. That's right. And he didn't promise that he yoke his heart. The Bible said the way of the transgression is hard. He never said that his way is hard. We say ways are easy. We make it hard when we run away from him. That's why we always have trouble. When we run away from him, we can't even get a good night rest. Because we always trouble. I could remember very well, before I become an Adventist, I always pray, Lord, help me to be saved before the door closed. And while in my dream, one night I lie down sleeping and I dream that even lunatic enter into the kingdom and I stay out. Mm. There and then I get my answer. If they can make it, I can make it. Yes. Yes. And if I could make it, you can make it. Yes. Every one of us could make it. Yes. All we have to do is let Christ let go and let Christ. Yes. Let go and let Christ. I'll, I promise you one day I was to tell you about my becoming an Adventist. Yes, now before I become an Adventist, I used to, you know, as young boys grow, grow marijuana, so to speak. Mm. And the time when I got the call, I might have, let, let me do a jump, jump the gun. I used to have a stick, rope up, 
a push stick and beard long and they used to call me Moses. Hmm. So one day in playing dread or practicing dread, I saw a little little thing like that, emo dread and me. I said, no, this ain't good. <laughs> so I left this kind of a life. And when I got the call, I had a bag of marijuana. Mercy. Which I left on a tree and never looked back. Mm. Well, we used to go play pools in this uh, hall. They say, I'll give you six months to come back. Mm -hmm. Forget it. From 1982 to now. Amen. Amen. I never look back. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. When you put your hand to the plow, don't look back. I'm going to tell you why in a, in, in a minute you shouldn't look back. When you put your hand to the plow. Let's go back to the scripture reading. You see, I, I'm not familiar with this. Um, Back to the scripture reading. We take it again. Let us read together. Yes. After he have done, he might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he shall shall come, will come, and will not tarry. But just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them, of them, them that draw back unto the but of them that lead to the saving of the soul. You know, as I said before, we have confidence in Christ and His promise because He, he is not a liar. He said what he meant, and he meant what he said. Yes. That's why we must take him at his word. Yes. Now the just shall live by faith. But what? But if any what? Let's take that again, man. But what? If any man drop back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Let's go here. But we are not of them that will draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. The just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. As I said before, you can't go and tell Christ or make up a conjure story that you didn't know. That's why I give it everybody ample opportunity to make sure that they do. But we are not of them that draw back unto the perdition, unto perdition, but, but them that what? Believe unto the saving of the soul. I looked up the word perdition. Perdition. A state of what? Final spiritual ruin. Mm. Loss of the soul. Damnation. Hell. Utterly destruction or ruin. Mm. When one come to Christ and he look back, that's what will happen. Remember Christ um, quote that. All that the Father gave me, I kept. Except the son of perdition. When you draw back, that is what happened. A state of spiritual ruin. Mm. Utterly destruction. And no coming back when probation closed for you. Mm. You see, the reason why there is a time limit on our probation which we don't know. Hmm. 
So you might be drawing back, and that's your last draw. So cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For we need of patience, that virtue. We need of that virtue. When Christ comes, he says, here are the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep his commandments and have the faith of Jesus. Amen. Don't draw back, brothers and sisters. Yes. For drawing back, it is dangerous. That's why, you, you see, you see sometimes um, sometime we get careless in church. And sometimes most leave the church. I'm not saying you must stay there to become a hypocrite. But it's better to stay. Mm. Amen. By staying, one day, yes. you might get the prick. Yes. yes. But when you're out there, they ain't no pricking for you. Mm. Because why? You had been there already, left. Let me give you a little secret. It's not a secret anyway, but I'm going to tell you. When one leaves Christ, you can't come back on your own. True. Is he that worried in the first place? Who think you could come back on your own? I say, I'll come back, I'll come back. You have to stand in line, wait on the call. That is why it's so dangerous to live. True. You don't bring yourself there. God gave you the opportunity to be there. So you can go and come back when you want. It's not a walk in and a walk out something. He that cometh to God must believe. And believe that he is a rewarder, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You have to want to. Not just getting up and going. You have to. Christ have to put it in you. Because we are so far gone in sin. We can't come back. That's why Christ come in the garden looking for Adam. Adam couldn't come back on his own. Hmm. So Christ had to go searching for him. So when Christ come and search us out, out of how many billion people and he pick you? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord that he pick you out of how many billion people. It is an opportunity for you and I to be picked. A matter of fact, hand picked. Not one of these diseases that go on the Israel and uh, the Egyptians that shall come on the Israelites once you believe. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Once you believe. And believe in it, not just saying you believe. Believe is an act of faith. Yes. Oh, I know that. 400 years, Israel was in bondage. The day come when they be free to Moses, to God, through Moses. And when they get to Kedesh, not one of the old head make it into the promised land. Hmm. You know why? Because of unbelief. Now, unbelief, yeah, only two. And because they were, they, they were believers, that's why they make it. You know why they didn't make it? Unbelief. Now, unbelief and disbelief is two different things. If a man disbelieves, he has the potential to believe. He just don't have all the evidence yet, but he could believe. But when you unbelieve, you have all the facts, all the proof, but still you won't believe. It's a dangerous thing. Yes. That's why they didn't make it into the promised land. And Christ would not take any unbelieving person into the kingdom. Yes. You must believe. Yes. 
Ain't no disbel disbelieving person or people going into the kingdom. A matter of fact, and no, no uneducated person going into the kingdom. I'm not educated, you know, by the way. But you have to know Jesus Christ. Yes. That is education. Yes. 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 Nobody's strolling or walking into heaven. When Christ had the supper, he provided a robe for everyone. Yes, he did. Yes. Everyone had to wear a white robe. But some smart guy yes. decided he's going to wear your robe. Yes. And some of us, some of us in church think we're so smart, we're smarter than God. No, so we could go around adding all kind of laws. I read some way in, in the commentary that the scribes and Pharisees added 500 laws unto God's laws. That they have to carry it in a book on the shoulder. That's what we're doing today. Everything else is jumping and popping up in God's church. It's no, no big deal if you walk naked in the church these days. It is quite acceptable. Because the shepherd are not pointing anything out no more. All they want is money and gain. We are in dangerous time. Perilous time shall come. And perilous time is here. Yes. Men shall be lovers of money more than lovers of God. Yes. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Timothy said with such, turn away. Turn away. It's not good for you. As God's people, we are heaven bound. Yes, yes, yes. Why am I saying that? After you have done the will of God, you're going to receive your promise. Yes. I don't think we're here for, for joke in this closing art history. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, 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 no. That can't happen. Everyone here must make serious commitment with Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Today, I didn't plan that, but let us recommit our life to Jesus Christ. Yeah. That song, I gave my life to thee. Yes. That precious blood I shed, that thou may ransom me and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What has thou given for me? Two eighty one. I gave, I gave my life for thee. Sing it. We'll sing it. I can't sing. <laughs> no, I really don't know whether it's in the old or it's in the new. 21 in the new. It's always good to recommit our life. Yes. Not moment, not, not, not minute, but it should be moment by moment. As the song says.
very, very well. No one day, a tattoo and a scorpion walk on the other side of the land where food run out. I know that the tortoise can swim very well, which the scorpion could not have swim. So he asked the tortoise for a little ride to go on the other side. And this, the tortoise said, no scorpion, I don't trust you. He said, you might speak. The scorpion beg, he said, No, I would not sting you. So he talked, he talked down the tortoise in accepting him to give him a ride. And he drunk upon the tortoise back, and they were traveling along. And while talking, the tortoise said, Well, scorpion, I misjudged you, man. I really thought you would have sting me. In charging going around, as soon as the, the tortoise was about to reach land, he stretched out his neck and he says, Scorpion, I misjudge you. I'm sorry about that. And with the moment he stretched out his neck, the scorpion launched his stick. In going down into the bottom of the waters. Old tortoise cry out. Old scorpion. Old scorpion. You deceive me. I trusted you. But you deceive me. And the scorpion reply back. Old tortoise. I tried. I tried hard. But it's my nature. Our nature is to sin. The sting of sin is in mankind. But God comes and brings grace to overcome sin. Our nature today is to sin. But Christ can help us to overcome that nature. So with that in mind, I will ask Pastor Calendar to come and pray for us to make a complete commitment Amen. with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.